What's up, everybody? My name is Pi. Welcome to SR Lounge. We're here actually on our new set, and I'm here to welcome our guest today, John Solano. John, welcome. You're the first person that we filmed on this new set. It's a nice set, Pi. Nice set. Glad you're here. Good digging. design. So, uh, just a little intro. John is, well, you can kind of say he is our mentor, actually. I, I really got my first taste of what successful wedding photography was working with you. And, and you basically took us out on, uh, well, you took me out on, on six different shoots that I remember very, very vividly. John is an incredible wedding photographer. And this is the funny thing. My mom says I'm the best. <laughs> His mom, in this case, <laughs> would actually be right. <laughs> in most cases, mom probably is a little bit biased. But in this case, she's probably right. But, uh, you know, you, you go around and do a lot of speaking and stuff. And this is the funny thing is that I always say that some of the best photographers are people that you might not hear about as much as others. Like the ones that are typically the most present on the internet might not be the ones that are very much shooting a lot. Now, John, on the other hand, he does go around speaking and he, he teaches and educates and everything, but you spend the majority of your time shooting. Shooting, well, that's how you make money. That's how you make money. And he owns one of the most successful wedding photography companies here in Southern California. You guys shoot, what is it, 150? About a 125 to 150 a year. Okay, and of those, this is the crazy part, of those, you do how I'm many about, yourself? I'm doing about 90 to 100 okay. of those. So that's crazy. He's doing <laughs> midweek stuff, he's doing weekend stuff, plus that doesn't include like all your other shoots, your portrait sessions, no, whatever I'm talking, else. I'm talking events, just, full events. Just like, full events. So anyway, we wanted to bring you in, do a little interview with you, and I wanted to start first by talking about essentially how you carved out this niche or what became your overall style because you serve a very high-end clientele here in Southern California and it, it's it's one that like okay I'll tell you guys some stories later on but I got my first taste of getting freaked out at a wedding at John's wedding when I was basically assisting you <laughs> but these are really high-end clientele how did you essentially carve out your style and your niche within this this clientele I think um, I think it's twofold I think uh, one you've heard many times, maybe, you make someone happy, you know, it all comes back to you. But if really, if you make someone happy, they go and they tell like, what, two, three people. If you make someone unhappy, they tell everybody. <laughs> yeah. So obviously, you're looking for that better two, three people. And, um, you know, within that, I think, um, you know, and my, the style of like the, the way I try to approach an event, I would say it's about an experience. I think people need to feel that it's not a, you know, photography, sometimes you have grooms or people that maybe, you know, I'm dealing with normal people, I'm dealing with doctors, lawyers, you know, educated people, people that have careers, and, you know, they're not professional models. Mm -hmm. They're just normal people. So, you know, a lot of times people's tolerance levels are, you know, short, some are longer, and I think the experience is probably the most important, one of the most important things. Okay, so essentially you're saying your mantra is all around the client experience and basically loving your clients, but what, what would you say kind of defines that experience that you give to them? Because nobody remembers what you said. They don't remember exactly what you did. They don't remember exactly how you did it. All they remember is how you made them feel. Mm -hmm. And if it, fit, if it felt, if the, if the photo process felt effortless, if it felt you know, smooth and efficient and it just was easy and fun, Okay. That's the experience. And, I, and yeah. I, I used to work for a studio many years ago. And here's something that I learned. I learned from this, and it was like amazing to me. There was this one guy, his name was, we called him John John. That was his name. Mm -hmm. And I worked at the studio. You know, this was during the film days, shooting Hasselblads, and, you know, we had eight photographers, big two offices. And I worked at the studio full time. He was like a, a main shooter, but he only worked on the weekends. And people would come, or, you know, I would have to deliver. You know the the proofs. Yeah. Back then, remember proofs? Remember that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I don't well, remember are, them. Well, so these well, are yeah. <laughs> these are five by fives, hand numbered on the back with the with the negs. We'd number those. <laughs> so I would deliver the proofs, and as a, as a photographer, I thought this guy's stuff. As a peer, I thought his stuff was terrible. Uh -huh. Like I would hand them to people, and I'd be like, <laughs> and then, but then clients would grab the images, and they'd be like, oh my god, these are amazing. And I would be in my mind and be like, oh my God, what's the matter with you? <laughs> you know, but then there was another guy, technically perfect, lighting, like three, three to one ratio, yeah. metered exactly, the poses were exact. And I would deliver those photos, clients would hate them. That's so interesting. Because client associated the pain 
it yeah. took to take those photos. They associated like the perfect pose, what you see. But could you imagine if you're, if you're a groom and it's not just your thing and the guy's over directing, over posing, over lighting, taking too long, you know, for one shot that, you know, me, I would shoot it in like, you know, five seconds and move on, you know, and it would take him 10 minutes yeah. to do one shoot. So now it doesn't matter. That's the feeling part. That's the, they remember how you made him feel. And now they're looking at the most beautiful image, but all they remember is how much they hated that moment. That's, that's a very interesting point because I, I have actually, uh, I've noticed the same thing like in, in our studio and in other studios as well. It's, you could come back from a wedding and feel like, I don't feel like I did anything that was necessarily technically different or anything that challenged myself, but you gave them a good experience and they, they absolutely love it. And you're not necessarily thinking, oh, from a photographer's perspective, I didn't do anything crazy, but it's the experience that they are remembering, that feeling that they're remembering. I have a story about this, mm -hmm. actually. This was from my, my very first wedding assisting you. This was like six years, I don't think you remember this at all. We were at the, <laughs> we were at the Pasadena Langham and- uh, Oh, this was this weekend. I think that was the last time I was there with you. Yeah. <laughs> so that was my very first time assisting mm -hmm. this guy. And so we're at the Pasadena Langham. And I remember that we were out in the courtyard and we were shooting and I was just, I was, I was helping you carry your stuff and, and do the lighting thing. And I was learning a tremendous amount and it was awesome. It was an amazing experience. And I remember dad coming out during the middle of a couple session. It was, it was maybe five minutes into it. And, and dad laid off this stream of expletives, okay? John, I'm not gonna say all the, I'm not gonna say all the words that he said, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give the Were they PG French? Were they speaking French? Yeah. It, it, was, yeah. it could have been. John, we're not paying you all this money to effing be out here wasting their time. We need to get them into this party right now. What are you doing? And he literally had them outside for maybe a total of five minutes. And I was like ready to crap my pants at that point. And you turn to them and you just go, it's cool, baby, I got this. I want to go inside, relax, have a drink. I'm going to have them inside in 10 minutes. You played it off like nothing. Like nothing even just happened. This guy came out firing shots at you and it was like water off a duck's back. Firing shots, water off a duck's back, I don't know. But either way, it was, it was a moment where like it kind of truly showed that, that client serving experience side, like making it very smooth, doing what they like and showing your kind of grace under pressure that was really, really impressive. So if you were to say like on this, on this client experience side, if you mm -hmm. were to say that there is one thing that you do in particular with your clients to give them that good feeling, what would it be? Always be, be part of the solution, not the problem. And you know, be able to identify the type of personality you're dealing with. You know, if you're dealing with a, an extrovert that's very bubbly and outgoing, talks with their hands, do the same. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're dealing with somebody, like one of my most intense clients, one of my biggest jobs in my life was about two years ago. Biggest order I've ever taken in my life with this client also. And thank God I'm doing uh, her, her daughter's, uh, other daughter's wedding at the, end of, uh, at the end of this month. So I'm already like losing, getting an ulcer on that one because this lady was probably the most intense client. But I understood her. I got her, mm. and I remember sometimes like people like they, they t kind of test you. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, certain clients do. Certain like like that dad then. Like that dad, yeah. They try to, and, and again, you can't, you can't. Not 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 about weakness or being more alpha than they are. Not about that. It's just more about feeling, you know, instilling confidence in them. But you have like a millisecond to do that. You can't. Yeah. It's not a. There's no orchestrated thing. It's almost you just gotta like, I don't have any panned, you know, canter or, you know, patter to that. I don't have, yeah. you know, I might bluff it off, but I mean, you still gotta, the guy's paying me, so I gotta like respect him. He's not wrong, the guy can feel whatever he wants to feel, it's his feeling, you know, but you can't, you gotta always keep that level of, uh, what's the word, that, of confidence in them. Yeah. And I remember this one client, the most intense client ever. And they hired me on the job and I walk in, first time I see the mother, I go, hello, Mrs. So-and-so, nice to meet you. I finally get to see your face, you know, the face behind the voice on the phone. And she goes, John, that's great. And she goes, but do you know where you're supposed to be right now? <laughs> and where were you supposed to be? And I go, absolutely. I had the timeline in my pocket. I'm, 
I'm supposed to be right here. And I'm like, actually, you're late because he's supposed to be sitting in that makeup chair 15 minutes ago. <laughs> and then she looks at me and she smiles and she goes, we're going to get along just perfectly. <laughs> and it's like, I knew that going in that she was this like micromanager. Yeah. And intense. I could tell on the phone, the coordinator, just people like to tell me, oh, look out. She's cool. She's cool. She pays. And she's a great client, but yeah. she, doesn't, she doesn't miss a beat. Yeah. You know what? I'm okay with that. I'm totally 100% okay with a client that's intense. I prefer the high pressure, high pressure cooker jobs. Yeah. I prefer that. Like it keeps me sharp. I like that, the, the adrenaline rush, you know, the intensity of that. And I don't mind if a client's, you know, on me to do it, to do, fa I, I like that thing, but as long as they pay their bill. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like the, the client that, that demands and demands and demands, no problem, I'll take it, just, I'll, I'll perform, you're paying. You yeah. know, just to, you don't have to give them discounts and stuff. I mean, I'm not that complex of a, I'm not that complicated of, um, of a customer, but if I'm paying full rate at the Four Seasons, yeah, you know, and, 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 and some of the better, better be, yeah, better be great. Yeah, Otherwise, you're sure. gonna complain. If you're, if you're not asking for any deals, right? So what I love mm -hmm. about this is is the like you said, the confidence that you're instilling. And I, I would say that if there was one thing I would pinpoint, it's that confidence that you instill for the clients to have in you to do your job. And I remember after that dad came out and you said that, he quietly just said, okay. And he went back inside and you went and did your thing. And, and for someone just starting out in photography, it was, a, it was a very impactful moment to me because I realized, you know, so many photographers now, they want to, you do these crazy weddings, okay? You do huge, multi-million dollar events, crazy stuff, absolutely nuts. I mean, our, our biggest weddings is like what you do every day of the week. But you know, photographers always kind of say how they, they want to jump into these big budget weddings and they want to be making $10,000 or $15,000 $20,000 to shoot these weddings. So do I. And they don't want to put in the time that it takes to get to this level because I remember when that client did that, I sat there going to myself, I'm sure glad my clients are only paying me about 1000 to 1500 bucks right now because I, I, there was no way I could have handled that pressure. At that time of where I was in my career, I couldn't have handled it. And if, if that did happen to me, well, I would have caved. You caved. totally caved. It would. I, I would have probably said something that that would have calmed the 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 dad down, but then I would have just imploded when it came to the rest of the couple session because I would have been thinking that the entire time, mm -hmm. rather than getting good photos that would have been in my head, and so, it it, it just brought into me kind of that that understanding that you know as a photographer you have to grow into this like you have to grow into that confidence that it takes to be able to handle that kind of clientele, to be able to work with those clientele and not just kind of, I don't think there's any jumping into it. No, but it's like, you know, photography, anybody can teach somebody else to the camera settings, you can teach people lighting, you can teach people posing skills, you can teach people all of that, but it's like you can't teach people charisma. Yeah. You know, and that's, sometimes people ask me, well, what do I need to do? Like, sometimes some people don't need, you know, they don't need photography school, they need like charm school or something. That's my favorite line from you. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's absolutely correct. And that's, when we look, I mean, I'm sure you do the same thing when you look mm -hmm. to people, you look for their ability to interact with people versus, I feel, like, I feel like the technical side is trainable. I would rather have the best people that have worked with me yeah. at my side as second photographers that have gone on to start their own businesses, have people that I've trained from a clean slate. Yeah. <clears throat> no bad habits. It's like teaching a golfer how to golf. You're better off teaching someone who doesn't know how to golf how to golf. Yeah. Than to teach a golfer that thinks he knows everything. To golf. Absolutely. Because he has all his bad habits, and some people think like, "Oh, why wouldn't I sit on the stage at the during the, the ballroom at the Four Seasons?" Yeah. You know, some people would think like they, I don't know, just common sense is not that common. Yeah. Absolutely. So this is awesome. So the, from the client side, your your mantra is essentially the client service, giving them uh, that overall feeling, that overall, uh, you know, that's what you want them to walk away with. Just that feeling of just a great experience overall. What else do you think plays into your success as a, as a photography studio and a yeah. photographer? You know, um, I love, um, what was that? It's a great quote. I used, to, I used to have it on my website a long time ago, like excellence is not an act, it's a habit. So, you know, I have a small, you know, I, I have a big, uh, for a photographer, I think it's a, it's a, a large business as a photography studio. But, you know, in the big scheme of things, it's a small business compared to, like, real big business. Yeah. Um, I think what's important for, for a studio, and I, me, I'm, one of my weaknesses at my office, and I'm constantly 
to wanting to better, wanting to better is to, is the client follow up, mm -hmm. to be first at the plate, to be the first one there. Um, like a lot of photographers, they take Monday off. I work Mondays because I think sometimes I have this belief system that people over the weekend call and leave messages. Yeah. And they do. And on Monday, I want to be the first one to call back. Yeah, yeah. Where everyone else takes the day off, at least I have the appointment set up yeah. to meet that client that week. I'll take Tuesday off. Tuesday's like my Saturday. Yeah. So, you know, that's, that's one thing. And also is uh, I do have a, a very strong belief in um, being part of the delivery of the finished product. Sure. In my case, obviously, it's, it's the album. And describe what you mean by that. Like what, as part of the delivery, what would you say that is? You know, you know, I'll, I'll tell a client, like I'll tell a client, you know, in meetings like the shooting day, and you know very well, you know, the shooting day, in my mind, that's like the fun, easy part. Mm -hmm. That's the fun, easy part. I could do that, I could probably do that five days a week. Yeah. If I, if I had, I would prefer to do that five days a week, at, let someone edit it, make the kind of living I'm making now, and have to do zero, you know, uh, meetings, designing, follow-up, retouching, printing, binding, yeah. all those, you know, all those little instances that are happening to produce the finished work. I would much rather do that because the shooting part is the fun, easy part. The, the difficult part, I think, that takes longer than the shooting day is the post-production afterward to, to, to end result. But that's what you mean by, I mean, you have to have a hand in that because that is the final delivery. I, I put a lot of emphasis in that because, you know, after a wedding, well, what does a couple have? You know, they, they got each other, they got their rings, and an album yeah. from the wedding. Everything else is gone. You know, flowers are dead, <laughs> cake's eaten, you know, the fruit table's gone. <laughs> there's, nothing, there's nothing left. And I, I just, I feel... I feel if you, if, I, if you don't, I used to work for a company and my old boss, he would instill this in my head. He says, if you're not delivering an album, you're shooting yourself in the foot because there's nothing of beauty you've created from that day. Mm -hmm. And you know, nobody's gonna, you know, if you just give him a box of photos, just give him a disc. He, I, I, I came from this belief system and I still believe it's true. You want tangibility in someone's home mm -hmm. because you know, that's real, and when their friends come over, it's a conversation piece, and it sits, and you know, my goal is that every couple that I do has a beautiful album in their book, in their a beautiful album in their home, and their friends come over, they look at it, I want them to fall out of the chair. Yeah. It looks that good. Yeah. So that's kind of my, my focus, you know, with as end result. Okay. Having the hand in, I mean, basically the, you're, you have a hand in it every single part of that overall experience that we've talked about. I mean, from the shooting all the way to the final delivery. I mean, a lot of times I, um, I, don't, I don't edit my own stuff. Yeah, you have your team that does that. They edit it, I don't call it correct, I don't exposure, just a lot of times when I shoot it, it was like the film days. In the film days, I mean, I would shoot it, I had, we had nothing to, no reference on the back, no one would chimp off the back, I just knew it was there. Mm -hmm. You know, even to this day, I don't even like look at the back of the camera too much. I just, you know, occasionally just for exposure. But then once I dial it in and I got my exposure, I'm in the same, you know, light setting. I'm, I never look at the back of the camera. Yeah. I'm just shooting, shooting, shooting. That's, that's if, you know, the only time I look at the back of the camera is when I need to just get my exposure down. You know, before I would have my light meter, nothing else to look at. I just say, oh, I trust that. I can make sure the ISO is correct. Um, you know, and that's yeah. it. Okay, so we actually got into this entire conversation with what is your photographic style. Now, what, this, here's what I love about this. You didn't really say, oh, I have this you know, poppy vintage style or I love high contrast images. Your style is the experience that you're delivering to clients. And I mean, right? Is that? Yeah, because that's all they remember. Yeah. So whatever kind of image it takes to, to, to get them to have a great experience is what you're basically delivering to them. You know, just make them feel like it's not a chore. Make it feel fluid, make it feel easy, make it light, make it fun. Yeah. And as long as they're laughing, you're, you're, you're in the right place. I love that. I appreciate that. And in the next segment, I want to dive actually a little bit into kind of how you got your start. So you guys can all wait for that. We're going to be posting that probably the follow-up week in the next segment with John Solano. In the meanwhile, you guys can be sure to check out his work online. You can check out the website. Do you still have that old website? The old website? No, it's been redone. Oh, it has been redone. <laughs> okay, good. He actually redid his website. The website? What? www.that'll never take. 
<laughs> well, where can they learn more? Where can they see your images? Uh, uh, my website, www.imagemaker, imagemaker.com. And it's a new version, right? Not the it's old? new version. Okay, good. He used to, I gave him flack about it all the time, too. All right, so we'll see you guys in the next segment, next episode.